It's time now for the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington, pastor of the World's Church of the Living God, located at 2110 Glass Street, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, here's Pastor Alan Harrington. He will never Never forsake you Even though he knows Everything there is to know about you I recommend Jesus Jesus That's why in order for a person to be delivered from anything, from anything, that there are certain things that you really must let go. The first thing, of course, is pride. Pride will keep people from, de from being delivered. Pride will keep people from being saved. Pride will keep, it, man, it, it'll keep people from being healed. You know, along with unforgiveness. And of course, that stands in the way of, of people's healing and, and blessing. Things that we pray for, we ask God for, but yet we've not done what God tells us. We've not relinquished, we've, we want freedom, but we've not set others free. It won't happen. It will not happen. You cannot be delivered without, and, and this is part of it, and for men of God, and we take this when we read this a lot of times, it's because I think Paul is speaking of himself, but it's for everybody, for men of God. And he says here in 2 Corinthians 4, and I, I hope today that if you haven't, to this point, really fallen in love, I'm mean in love with the Lord Jesus Christ, I hope it happens for you today. I hope that if, if the, the, the blessings of God, if the peace of God has, has not overshadowed your life, your home, your family, what, whatever, I hope it happens for you today. But first, you have to turn loose. God cannot deliver any of us from something that we call our friend. Come on now. Because we're going to go right back to it. And he can't deliver us from something that we, that we like. Uh, that, we, that we like so much 
that we will not, certain things appeal to the flesh. But when it comes to deliverance, as how, remember, how many remember the message a few, few weeks ago about the saints, about how they overcame by the, 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 the blood of the Lamb and by the, the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives, what? Unto death. It was more important for them to live, please God, and serve God. than anything else at all. That's the most important thing. So the book tells us, as Paul was writing about, I'm sure himself and, and other ministers and men of God, he said, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, we have a ministry from God, as we have received mercy. He didn't say because we qualified for it. So we've received this ministry as we have received mercy and I think it was Paul who said in another place that he was praising and thanking God how that God has counted me faithful and he, oh hallelujah Jesus God has not, not that we were so much you know but God has he has reckoned me to be faithful He's counted those things that are not as though they are in my life. For his purpose, already predestined and foreordained, I've spoken it, saith the Lord, and thus it is. And Paul recognized that. And he says here, he said in another place, he's got me faithful and, and, and put me in the ministry, in his ministry. And he says that we have received this ministry as we have received mercy. We thank not. We don't give up. We don't quit. There's no turning back. There's no giving up. That's not just for preachers. All scripture, and I believe it, and I'm going to believe it forever, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture. And all of it's profitable for doctrine, for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in the way of righteousness. It's for the saints of God. It's for the household of God. And in, 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 in delivering the message of the Lord, the message of Scripture, the Bible says how the Scripture, you can depend on Scripture. We need to do more of that, saints. To depend on God's Word. To proclaim it. To declare it in the name of Jesus. Instead of just trying to handle things, we need to use that sword of the Spirit. And declare God's Word. This is for everybody. We faint not. And, and uh, the, Jesus said in another, he said himself, that no man who puts his hand to the plow and looks back, you know, remember Lot's wife? You, hmm? They had instruction, come out. Come out of Sodom. Don't, don't look back, don't go back. Leave every, just come on out. But her heart was still in Sodom. You can't truly, you can't. There's no way you can enter into the kingdom of God when somebody else has your heart. Didn't Jesus say that? Wherever your treasure is, what? Where your treasure, your treasure, what you, your prize, your, what, what you love most, what you desire most. Wherever your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And God has given each and every, everybody that's saved, everybody that's saved has a definite ministry. Every, no, and, and you don't have to wait till you get 100 years old to start doing it. You don't have to wait to get 20, 30, 40, 50, before you start in ministry. Everyone has a ministry. And ministries lead to other ministries always all the time orchestrated by the Holy Ghost orchestrated by the Holy Spirit of God 
So it says we receive this ministry as we receive mercy. And it says we have in, this, in the second verse, the second verse, but have renounced. That's what I'm looking at, that word renounced. What does renounced mean? To reject it. In our spirit, to reject it verbally. To put it aside, to cast it down. To have renounced, and this is what you must do. If you want to be delivered from it, if you want to be saved, you've got to renounce Satan. You've got to renounce evil. You've got to renounce, you've, you've got to lay down control of your own life and really get to receive Jesus as Lord. You can't still be Lord of your own life. You can't. It's impossible. He is our director. Oh, yes, he is. And he, he goes on to say that we've renounced the hidden things. What? Hidden things of dishonesty. How can dishonesty be hidden? Through hypocrisy, for one. Come on now. We've renounced the hidden things of our lives. Our hypocrisies. We, 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 we've let it go. Our hidden envies, jealousies. We've renounced unforgiveness. We, we, we let all this stuff go. Have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God, what? Deceitfully. So how can people have hurt so? And, and that's why I pray to God, I pray always, well, many of you already know, for, for saints, for God's people, for, for pe some people who are lost. Now, I don't know who's, you know, you can, well, you, you can tell sometimes. But you pray that God will save certain people. I pray that God will turn the hearts of certain people to him. I also pray that God will turn the hearts of the saints. Come on now. Oh, God, have mercy on us. I do. I pray that God will turn the hearts of, now say, saints to him. When Jesus was asked by the lawyer, who was trying to be funny, well, who, when Jesus said, love your neighbor, he says, well, who's my neighbor? Who's, you know, he knew the scripture. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. All your mind, everything, just with all that you have. God wants all of us. And there are some people who, from day to day, can never, they seem to never be able to, to be rescued, as it were. They have the knowledge that Jesus saves. They understand that. That Jesus blesses, you know, somebody mentioned that, that, that we re, we've received the righteousness of God, but they can't walk in that, in that, that victory of the Lord. Can't seem to overcome, even though the Bible tells us that greater is he that is in us than what? Than he that's in the world. And that's why we've overcome. because of the greatness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. But something can't seem to, what is it, what blocks us? We, we won't turn loose. Our angers, our envies, our jealousies, unforgiveness. Hallelujah. Our sins, people refuse to let it go. No matter, we hold on. God, you stand, I, I'm keeping this. You stand aside. Mm -mm. That we have anything that is contrary to God's voice. You don't want it. Anything that's contrary to God's word, you do not want it. You want to turn it loose. And I can't say that you'll live without trial because, yes, you probably have more trial. 
More trials, the more, the more you grow, the, the, the more you, you, you give up to the Lord, the more you open up to God. Yes, you're going to have some more trials. But man, the more victory you're going to live in and walk, and the more you're going to see God. Yes, you will. He wants you, our whole hearts. Can you handle the word of God to see? For sure you can. Hallelujah, Jesus. If, and he did, if Satan handled the word of God, people can handle it deceitfully. You know, I mean, you, we can, and, and, some, and, we, and people get accustomed to handling the word of God, and it's, it's a deceitful thing to, to re, say, just, just for instance, to say uh, Jesus Christ is, 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 is my Lord, I believe, he, he saved me, I, be, I belong to him, but I'm not gonna do what he says. That's, you're deceiving yourself. You know, he, he said that. And, and you'll listen, I'm gonna get that, who are taken captive by his will. You'll ensnare yourself. We can say that, and I believe it, that's one of my favorites too. I'm just about all these scriptures are my favorites. But how many of us know that no weapon Y'all help me say it. You don't even have to look it up, do you? No, no, and I believe that. That no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Praise, I believe that. I, I believe in my heart. And I, I look to see it different ways every day. I believe in my heart that God, by his grace and by his mercy, has given me power to tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. I believe that. Jesus said in St. Luke, and nothing by any means shall hurt me. I believe that. But do we believe, as Jesus said, love one another, as he said, as I have loved you. Do we believe that? Do we believe in laying aside all malice and anger and all, do we believe, the, see, and it's hypocrisy, just to try to use God's word for some personal benefit. It's wrong. That's using it deceitfully. Satan tries to use the, tr tried to use the word on the word. He tries to use the word on, on God's people. He'll try to create confusion by misusing it and quoting scripture to you. This is John. Second verse, we're gonna just read it. But we've renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God, hallelujah. But if our gospel, and we've, 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 by God's grace, not because we anything, but by the grace of God, that we've manifested truth to you by his spirit, through his word, by his anointing, God has. And so we commend ourselves to your conscience in the, we've taught you the truth. God's word, whether it's been rejected or not, that we've given you the truth, the way of life, the way of life. But it says, but if it be hid, if our gospel, and this gospel, this good news, if it's hidden from you, if you just can't seem to get it, praise God. We went over some things the other week about the gospel the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. How that that one sacrifice was perfectly offered to God in perfection. It, it was, everything about it was perfect. Perfectly done to cover everything in our lives. Our grief, our, 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 our rejections, everything, our hurt, our heartache. How Jesus took everything all the punishment, all the shame, all the disgrace, all the humiliation, death took everything that we deserved. He took it. 
so that we can have everything that he is. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So when we speak of the gospel, people say, well, I know about Jesus, I know the gospel. I know about the, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's stayed in the tomb, Satan knows that. Three days and three nights, and so on and so forth, okay? The gospel, the, that's it though. That's it in a nutshell. But it carries so much weight. The gospel, the good news, brings deliverance. The good news, what Jesus did, what God has provided for us through the Lord Jesus Christ brings freedom. It, it brings reconciliation to God. It brings a new birth, a new creation in Christ. Former things, that old anger, that resentment, that hatred, that malice, that jealousy, that lying spirit. You know, that all those, those things are spirits. It, it releases you from that. And some people need to be saved and they just won't give it up. And there's some people who are saved who are antagonized by demons, but they're too proud. Come on. Come, oh, yes, sir. And you won't be free shielding your pride. Never will. God will not deliver you from certain things if you're praying through, through pride and you refuse to give it up. He won't. But, well, let's read this. If our gospel be hid, though, if the good news of the, God's grace is mercy, if, if it's all hid, it's hid to them who are lost, in whom the God of what? This world. Who is that? I thought the earth is the Lord's. It is. God is, he is the possessor of heaven and earth. He's the creator of heaven and earth. But when Adam sinned against God, and he, he lost his place. God gave Adam dominion over all, all creation. To subdue everything. But when, he, when they sinned against God, he stepped down. Guess who stepped up? And that's why the scripture says, woe be to the, to the inhabitants of the earth. Because Satan was cast down into the earth. He's, he's the God of this world. And that's how he was able to tempt Jesus. And thank God, you, whew, Jesus was un, 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 just unwavering in, in his faith. He said, you see all the kingdoms of the earth? So I'll, I'll give you all this if you just fall down and worship. That's because he is the God of this world. So the God of this world, and, and, and look, look at the world. Who are people living for? Come on now. Who are some of our, most, a lot of our family members? A lot of our friends? Who do they live for? Whose character do people demonstrate? Satan's got this world, and he's got the people in it. Look, look, at what's, I'm look around, look at you, even, even your, 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 your legislation, your Congress, just all, every, everything, news, every, look, look at this. This world is chasing Satan. He's got them already, but they're chasing for more of it. The God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. See, that's, that's what he wants to do. Let, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should do what? Should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves. We're your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who has commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure of God. Praise God Almighty. We have God's treasure. His, you call it Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. But we have this treasure in, what, in these earthen vessels of our flesh. Praise God. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. 
if you have been born again, if you, you are a new creation in Christ, sin has no more dominion over you. And so it comes apart in time. If you, because Jesus is coming, he is coming. Jesus is coming soon. So I heard that for years. Okay, you, so you got, that's the wrong attitude. I've heard it for years too, but you know what? I believe it. I won't say just as much. I believe it stronger today than I did when I first heard it. That's, that's the truth. I believe it more. Look for it. Expect it. Praise God. comes a time when you have to say, we have to, all of us, say, I'm through with myself. I'm through with me. Not this new creature, this creation that God has, has, has made me. Not this, this new person that's been born in me. We'll get to it one day. There's a reason why the, the Bible talks about the word of God being able to divide asunder between soul and spirit. There's a reason for that. Because there's somebody else in there with us too that bears resemblance to Esau, bears the resemblance of the first Adam that lives after the nature of the first Adam. God wants to deliver each and every one of his children from that, from that carnal-minded person, from that soulish person, so they can live. That's what he wants. How do you, you, you can't live in for the flesh you can't live as the Bible says. Jesus said, I, I came to do what give you life. That you can have life and have it more abundantly. You can't live that. I'm not just talking about having money. It's not just about money. See, that's, see, that's a mistake. Believers need discernment. It's about a life. A beautiful, wonderful life for the joy and the peace of God. It's just, oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Just full, just just filled in you. Well, you and when you can say it, oh God, my cup runs over. Oh hallelujah, thank you. Well, you can just praise God for His mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Well, you can really be filled, and we we might read that be filled with the Spirit of God. You can't do that living after the flesh. You can't live the life of God chasing the flesh and chasing this world. Praise God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. If you want to be delivered today, today's your day. If you are willing to renounce the hidden things of dishonesty, if you are ready today to say to yourself, to say, say to God and everybody, that you, you, you're stuck. You're not going to call evil good. You're not going to ignore evil and wrong. You're not going to do that. Well, you renounce rebellion. You renounce dishonesty. You renounce hypocrisy. You let it go. And you yield yourself to God. It's no limits. No limit. Begin to worship. In the book of Isaiah. Isaiah. Praise God Almighty. It's good for us to be here today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Be free. Always call out Satan. Always call out. Do you know that the, the Bible speaks of, uh, it's, we, we read it sometimes, we over read it, we read over it. It speaks of unbelief. The Bible says, let's run this race with patience and lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us. Amen. Unbelief is a sin. Yes, sir. It's a sin. And there are spirits of unbelief. You'd be surprised what, what spirits cause. What are spirits? Bodiless persons. Pe 
things, not just human beings, but personalities. That's why we call them persons. Bodiless personalities. Persons without bodies. Demonic spirits always looking for somewhere to live, somewhere to, to dwell. Now, a saint of God, a person who has been saved, when you have been saved, truly saved, and it'll show up, when you've been born again, born into the family of God, you have been made a new creation, a creation in, in Christ Jesus. It's impossible for you to be possessed of Satan. Impossible. But I, I, I hate to, I, I've been sort of, but I got to tell you the truth about it. We, we might have mentioned it before, but you can be demon influenced. You can be influenced by a demonic spirit. Come on now. Yes, sir. What do you think? Do you, do you know that unforgiveness is a spirit? Yes, sir. That's why they don't, people don't know what it is. They don't know how to deal with it. Yes, sir. Or either they try to justify it or they hang on to the other sin that sort of solidifies it, makes it strong in them, but it won't turn pride. Anyway, let's read this first. Okay, this is the sweetest, sweetest, so we'll read this. <laughs> All right, let's get this. In Isaiah, the sixth chapter. And we have to get to this. You find that Ezekiel, Elijah, all of the Old Testament men, uh, Enoch, the Bible says, just walked with God. You know, God dealt with, with Noah personally, very explicit about things that he needed to do for himself and his family. You know, everything, God just dealt with him. You know, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Isn't that something? And, and, and we say that we understand grace. Grace, the undeserved, the unearned love and favor. We, if you know it, that will give you enough to be thankful for eternity. To know that you have found grace in the eyes of, that's enough to make you just want to scream and shout, you know, and praise God, you know, for his goodness, for his kindness and blessing that you of all people, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Me, of all people. Oh, Father, thank you. Oh, of all people. Of all people. Me. Saved me. And since I've been saved, oh, Lord, me. Your mercy is so prevalent in my life. Praise God, all mercy. What can you do? What can you do but praise God? Yeah. From the Old Testament to the New, you find that not just men of God, but the people, they, they worshiped, they sought God's face, they fasted, they prayed. They, that, 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 that's in ministering to the Lord, what the Bible speaks of as ministering. They were worshiping God. And God meets them. He deals with them. Relationship. And it says here, talk, talking about this, this great king, I think he was a sort of evil man. I better read up on that again to make sure. But in Isaiah, the sixth chapter, it says, in, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. This is the prophet Isaiah. He saw God in his vision. God let him see. He said, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne. High and lifted up his train. You know what the train is? His, the, his, 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 the flowing robes, the garments. God, God let him see this. His train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Hallelujah. Seraphims are, are like, they're like angelic beings, but they're like, they have something to do with fire. They're fiery. And these seraphims 
Each one had six wings. With twain, with two wings, he covered his face. With twain, he covered his feet. And with twain, he did fly. Hallelujah. He covered his face. He covered his feet. He was in the presence of the Holy God. And he just wouldn't gaze at God. Hallelujah. Praise God Almighty. Hallelujah. They were in constant worship of the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Hallelujah. So that counts for four. And with the other two, they flew. Yes, sir. They were in constant worship yes, sir. of the Lord. And flying it just shows how that they were in service to God. Yes, Whatever abilities that God had given them, they used it in service to God. Yes, That's the way we're to live. Yes, sir. Of course, thanksgiving and praise, worship, and service to God. And, and, the, and they, said, they cried one to another. Can you imagine this? Thank you, Jesus. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Holy. I wonder what voices. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. But why do people write holy, holy, holy? Why is it written when they speak holy, holy, holy? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Because of the same reasons we've been studying and looking at over the, the past few weeks, I believe, the triune Godhead. Yes, sir. Holy, holy, holy. Yes, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Yes, holy is that one God, but holy, holy, holy. Yes, sir. In all of his, his personalities. And, when they, and, and the whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. And he, then he said, woe is me, for I'm undone. He saw this vision. And he said, I'm, I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. And one of the seraphims took a, a, a coal off the altar. And place it on this thing and say, now you're, you're cleansed, okay? Saints of God, if you have been filled with the Holy Ghost, if you have come under the blood of Jesus, if you have been washed in the water of his word, you, you're cleansed. And through the Lord Jesus Christ, the door has been opened when, when we can, each and every one of us can come boldly before the throne of grace. It's open. We're cleansed. Because we don't open our gate of our head. Our head. Who didn't talk about it? Thank you, Lord Jesus. We, we're clean. All because of Jesus. All because of what he's done. All because of God giving his only begotten son. We're cleansed that we can come in the presence of God. We don't present ourselves. We don't present this flesh. We don't present our works of righteousness. But we, we come with confidence. In confidence in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ on Calvary. And we present ourselves in spirit before the Lord. The, this new creation. We come before God and, we, and we're able to worship him. In spirit. That's what about you. If you, if you can't worship God that way, in spirit and in truth, you can't have pride and dishonesty. You got, that stuff's got to go. You can't approach God like that. No. No. You can't present yourself, well, I do this and I do that right now. God's not interested in that at all. God sees what he's done. And, to be, and, 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 and no, nobody, nothing, none of us are worthy to approach God, not even worthy to call, not even to say God, or to call his name Lord, Amen. Adonai, Elohim. Amen. 
Jehovah Nisi Kapahera Wahola Bahi Bahara Hu Yes he is. God is our righteousness. Oh, he's so he's made us that way. He has made us righteous. Praise God Almighty. I don't know about you, but I'm happy about it. I am I, I, I thank Jesus. And God wants them to so say, well, who am I going to send? And, and, and the prophet said, well, send me. You know, send me. And, and, and that's what the Lord wants to do with each and every one of us, to send us. Yes, send us as his representatives, yes, as his ambassadors. Oh, yes. as chi- we, we, like to, we like to say we're children of the king when it comes down to getting the king's stuff. You know, or living a certain life, a lifestyle. You know, but do we, how do we represent this God of ours, this king of ours? If he's that good, who do we tell about him? Praise God. Who do we direct toward him? Whether they receive it or not. Who do we let people say, hey, Jesus can, can help you with that. Jesus can save you from that. You know, who, 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 who do we t- who do we give that to? Who, who do we, the, the, as a song, some, I recommend Jesus, the, the choir sings of that. Who, do, do we recommend him to anybody? Do we recommend anybody to seek the face, to seek Jesus? God, hear the word of God. Praise God. If Satan can't stop you, from hearing the word, he'll try to prevent you from hearing it with all kinds of distractions, people getting in your way. And we just finished reading how the God of this world does what he blinds. You mean Satan has that much authority? Well, he blinds the minds of those that believe it. Not lest, lest they should believe it. See the truth and get saved. Just to give you some examples, let's go to the to the book of Saint Mark, and it says here, Saint Mark, first chapter, twenty-first verse. It says, and they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue, and he taught. He always went to the, to, to the synagogues and he taught. Now, those people needed to hear the gospel of the kingdom in the synagogues. Now, the, the people that he was teaching were what, what you call uh, the Orthodox Jews. Orthodox Jews. Deeply involved in what they believed, deeply involved in scripture. And, and some of those men were very evil. But some people were so very sincere. All of them, the, all the Pharisees weren't evil. Amen. They were sincere. Some got saved when they heard, dude, when they heard the, the teaching of Jesus. Nicodemus being one, I think Joseph Arimathea, a few, a few others. But, but some of them got saved. Some in the book of Acts, man, they, they got saved. They were marked out for salvation. But you find that Jesus, yes, he taught on the hillsides. He, he taught on, on the Mount of Olives. He never went around trying to make a name for himself. It was, it was about, he said, what the Father's given me. He said, what he tells me, that's what I speak. He, it, was, it was about doing the will of God, speaking the words of God. And he went to the synagogue. If people don't need, church, don't need help in the churches, I don't know who does. Because look at all the folks, and some of you come out of church, churches. Now, you know how it was. And some of us had, in service, in the congregations of truth and how have we lived? Come on. How have we lived? What's been our thought processes? Jesus went to the synagogues and he taught. And he went. He he went there and, and they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not like the scribes. So just dry, melancholy, all that stuff. And, and, but there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. Why did he cry out? He been, it's obvious the man was a member of the synagogue. 
He'd been there. But he never had been in the presence of Jesus. Those demons were comfortable in church. Come on. <laughs> Ooh, so you mean, so I, I thought we'd come to church. With, no, man, the, the Bible tells me in the book of Job, and you've, you've heard it, you've read it before. There was a day when the sons of God, the angels, came to present themselves before the Lord. And who came? Satan came also amongst them, you know? He's there. He always, always to, uh, some, to cast doubt, to accuse in the presence of God. He goes, God, to accuse. He's the accuser of the brethren. Don't let, don't, man, to keep people's mind off God's word. This man was a member of the synagogue, and, and this, but he, he was possessed. This, this, this man, he, this man had, 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 he was demonized. And it says, this unclean spirit, he cried out saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Are you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You're the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, hold your peace and come out. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You've heard the saying, you have to call a spade a spade. Come on now. That's how people get delivered. Do you know that? You cannot be delivered from something you want to keep. God is not going to wrangle and fight with you. Jesus didn't fight with this man. And, and, you, and that is, that's just, I just read that to show, that's, that's the scriptural aspect of it. He don't force, he won't force you to relinquish something. He's given you will. And that's all through the Bible from the Old Testament to, to the New. You find oh, the, the Bible says choose life, right? Yes, choose, you choose. Yes. God's given you the authority, the capability, and he puts that knowledge in front of you. Choose. So Jesus didn't argue with people. And that's why the Bible tells us in, in, in the book of Ephesians how we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but against principalities, different orders and, and, and ranks of the hierarchy of Satan, demons. That's who you deal with when you, when you deal with, with people evil, hateful. Something. What do you think is going on with those people? You have to see that, see that person, but you have to see past them too. Yes, you have to know if, if what's really, and some people are, are straight up demon possessed, not just demon influenced, but possessed. Jesus didn't speak to the man. He spoke to the, de to the demon, to the, to the man that was possessed with the 2,000 devils. That's as far as down in St. Mark 2. I believe 11th chapter, or 5th chapter. When he went to the land of the, the Gadarenes, and this man came out of the tomb, possessed with, with about 2,000 demons. Demons have to live somewhere. They, 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 they hate to just be out there in nothingness. Florida, they hate that. And that's why when Jesus approached this man, he said, what is your name? He didn't say, well, my name's John. Uh -uh. He said, see, demons have a name. And there are times that you find you, you, do, you have to call them by who or what they are. My name is Legion. My name is Legion, for there are many of us. He was the commander. He was, there are many of us. My name's Legion. Jesus commanded him, come out. This man was totally possessed. And he said, well, wait a minute. So in that times, when demons will fight, they will fight against relinquishing that host. It's got to go in the name of Jesus. You're going to see some things. Saints of God, you might as well get ready. God's ready to move with us, okay? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. They, they, I don't want to come out. 
Well, if we have to come out, can we go into the heads of the pigs? They want to live in, if, if they prefer human, a human body. But if they, if they, if they can't have it, they'll live in, in an animal of any, any, anything. And everybody knows what happened. They, they went to the heads of the pigs, about 2,000, and crashed the whole herd of swine into the sea. They, went, swear, cr- they couldn't take it. Demon possession, whether people want to accept it or not, is real. It's not gone anywhere because of modern religion. It's not gone anywhere at all. It's demon possession is real. God is real. The fallen angels are real. And he tells us to deal with them. In St. Luke, you can read this and then we're going to. He says uh, in the 10th chapter, first verse, okay, the Lord appointed seven others. Also, he sent them out two by two before his face into every city and place whether himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest is great. There's so much work to do, so much people to be reached out there, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore that the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into the harvest. And I'm going to send you forth as, as lambs among wolves. Say, don't, say, go your ways. That, so I, I don't carry uh, purses, extra money, script, shoes. So don't salute anybody by the way. Does that mean... Don't, don't throw your hand up, say hi. In some cases, they were forbidden from doing anything. But what he would say was what, it, and what the, uh, the Jewish people call it schmoozing. Don't stop, hey, don't, don't engage in idle conversation with anybody. Just go, go on about your mission. Do what God has sent you and called you out to do. Okay? You just go do that. And then he, he said, uh, in the eighth verse, he said, into whatsoever city ye enter and they receive you, Eat such things that is, as are set before you, and heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Go, okay, and then the tenth verse doesn't say what all they did, but they, they went in that authority. And then the seventeenth verse, rather, it says, The seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even they, now, I wonder why they were surprised. Even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. The, the demons. Diamond. Is a, it's spelled out in, in another place. D-A-I-M-O-N. These demons, the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And, and that's another reason why the book as Paul, I guess Paul was telling Timothy, uh, he said, well, when you ordain elders or ministers, you don't want to set a, a babe or somebody without any wisdom over church. Don't do that. Because they get lifted up in pride and they're going to fall into the condemnation of the devil. You know, and that will, believe me, I know, that will happen. That can't happen. So, so you don't do it. But they came back and they said, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And, he, and he, 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 he told him, he said, look, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Isn't that amazing? Jesus said, I saw it. I was there. See, Jesus was there when Satan, before the world was ever formed, or before a man was made or whatever. I saw Satan when he was cast out of heaven. I was there. And he said, I, I give unto you power I give unto you, and, and it stands today, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So when I deal with people, I deal with that knowing that the scripture cannot be broken. Praise the Lord. That's where you have to deal with life. That the word of God, scripture cannot be broken. But he says, now notwithstanding, even though they are subject, and they are, they're not subject to me, or you, or you, and nobody else. But only through, and uh, through the name of Jesus. He said, they're subject to us, what? In thy name. There's a secret to that. Yes, there is. Beautiful, marvelous, simple, holy. 
powerful secret. Simple. Subject us through thy name. So how did they do it? You have to do it in your life. The, the book tells us, uh, Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, what happens to the mouth speaketh. What's well, good and evil? Whatever's in you is going to come out. You full of cursing and bitterness, that stuff's going to come out. Well, we're enough. You can sing glory, hallelujah, and praise the Lord, praise the Lord, but let somebody rub you wrong, and that other stuff's going to come out. Gossip, lying, back, back, it, what, what, it's, it, it, it'll come out. Hatred, it, it will, whatever's in you is going to come out. If praise of God is in you, it's going to come out. You're going to, you're going to like the Bible said, my, David said it, my cup does what it runs over. Hallelujah, you can help it. Just filled with overflow. When you speak, and that's why they're laying on hands of people appointed to different office positions. The, the Bible, and, and we'll just have that message one day, but probably pretty soon. Just to let you know, it says to appoint men who are full of the Holy Ghost, full of the Spirit of God. Full of God's anointing. They trust God's word. They know God's word. The word why? Because the word of God is in them. They don't know everything. Every comma, dot, period. You know? And they, they're not afraid to speak, to live it, and to speak it. And when you speak to something in your life, dearly beloved saints of God, when you speak to something in your, then that's where you start, that's where we also, in our, in our own lives, and uh, the benefit for, uh, when we speak to other people for their good. We speak to things that antagonize us, or plague us, our home, whatever. In the name of Jesus, you have to speak that with the breath of God. Yes, okay, you understand that? We, didn't we talk about that? We, we, see, see, you have to put everything together. Yes, you have to speak to it with the breath of God. What? With, the, with God's spirit. Through the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. And that means so much to, by, uh, in the, with the, uh, in the authority, yes, with the full weight yes, of the name of the Son of the living God. Yes. Satan, I command you to come out of her right now yes. in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And you speak it. I say you get out of my house right now in the name of Jesus. And he'll leave. But eventually he'll come back. He'll try something else. But Satan cannot possess a believer. What, what does possession mean? My possessions, my possessions are stuff I own. That belongs to me. The, the, so if you are possessed, you, you're the, the property of God. How can Satan possess you? He cannot. If you have been saved, you've been born again, you, and you relinquish all. Even in blessing them, the, the psalmist wrote, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Relinquish all to God. What's Satan going to do with that? He can't. He can. But he can try to antagonize you. <laughs> and he continues to send his demons to do his work in your family, through you, through your children. And, 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 and many times he'll get us in an uproar. You get us going and, and won't, let, won't let us see how we accuse. He's the accuser of the brethren. So he tries to get us to act out who he is. Like in lying, telling lies, on, just whatever, what, whatever. Being, a hell, being a murderer, what, whatever, in character, in our minds, wh whatever. But lying and accusing other people. But we, we can never see ourselves as being wrong in anything. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay? So that, that's, that's the way he operates. Anyway, they, Jesus, thought, he told them, now you say, don't just rejoice that the spirits are subject unto you. Because they are. In, through, and by the name of Jesus, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Yes. Satan knows when God has relinquished his authority, given 
his authority to you. He knows it, but he doesn't want us to know how much authority God has given us. That's the truth. We read about Uzziah. He saw this in a vision. And uh, was it Stephen or, or Philip that was being stoned for his, 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 his witness, his preaching, his message? The, Stephen. And they stoned him. And before he died, he lifted up his eyes and God revealed heaven to him. He said, I see. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. I see the Son of Man standing by the right hand of God, standing on the right hand of God. <laughs> and, he, and he asked God to receive my spirit. Lay not this sin to their charge, have mercy. But he saw. All through this book, what you have to believe is that God will do what he said. Always, it is impossible for God to lie. No need. Now, Ephesians, the sixth chapter, I'm going to read this. Starting with the 10th verse, it says, Finally, brethren, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in God and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. And you know what those, those items are that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So if you don't put on the arm of God, you won't be, there's no way you're going to be able to stand. You know, it's, it's not going to happen. And, and it says this, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Now, what are principalities exactly? Hmm? Authorities. Demonic authorities, the power of Satan that are, are territorial yes, demons set over different areas, like, like that might be a head, a head, a head demon <laughs> over the United States with so many thousands of millions under him, you know. But but he's responsible over churches, over people's lives and homes and families. Various orders of ranks in the hierarchy of Satan. So we're wrestling against these different principalities. How can we stand against that? Through the anointing, the grace, the power of God, using the arm of God. And, 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 and by the way, this, is, this armor is, is, is based on the armor that the old soldiers in the days of the Roman Empire used to wear. And it talks, and you know about them, the, the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the breastplate of righteousness and all, the helmet of salvation. It talks about the sword of the spirit, the word of God. And, but it also, and we, we omit sometimes, or, or maybe we just forget about it, prayer. Yes, sir. Prayer is a weapon. Yes, sir. yes, it is. Yes, yes. The prayer of a righteous man, a woman avails much. Yes. Now listen to me. When you're doing people wrong and they're trying to do, by the grace of God, they want to do the, the right thing and not bother you. Listen, say, men, say, say, say for instance, if a man is being overly hard on his wife, or, or could be vice versa, I don't know. And that person just bows their head, or they, they might not do it in front of you, but they get along and they just pray to God. You better watch it. <laughs> prayer is a weapon. It's, it's, a good, it's a good way. But pray, and prayer is two ways. Thank you, Jesus. You speak, God allows. He, he loves praise. He loves to be appreciated. He loves thanksgiving and praise. And, and you enter into worship with him. He loves, he loves communicating. He loves to hear from you. You say, well, what? Said, so Father knows even what things you have need of before you ask, but talk to me. You know? That's what he wants. He wants to talk. He wants to be, and he hears you. Talk to me. Let's talk. But he wants you to listen to him also. Not just pour out your complaint, but listen to him. Take his voice. 
Listen to him. Obey. Take his guidance. Obey him. So we, we have these weapons now, and, and we all say we want to be good soldiers. Didn't, didn't Paul teach about it? I mean, good soldiers. Anybody ever seen an army where the soldiers didn't have to fight? You have to fight. Everything's not just going to be a gimme or a freebie. Even with some of the best of them, well-trained soldiers, SEALs, special forces, rangers, the best of them using everything they've been taught, clad in all the armor they could muster, using all the weapons that they've been trained to use, some of them still lost their lives. And with all the blessing and the promise of God, oh, Father, they loved not their lives unto death. Some of those people died for what they believed. You know, it's just amazing how much they loved Jesus and they, they love the truth, they love the church, they love the ministry, they love, they love God's family. Hallelujah. And they died. Most of the apostles were, were martyred and were killed, you know? So God, you don't join in any army or get drafted in or volunteer in or whatever with, with, the, with, with the promise that you'll never be shot at or you'll never be killed. No, natural army don't promise you. And God, he promises you his love, his grace, his protection, his life until he's through with us. And one way or another, we're all going to leave here. But he said, do this. Once you've done this, once you take the army, you wear it, you have done everything that I asked you to do so that you'll be able to stand. You will be able to until I'm done with you. You know, and, and then it's, it's time to go. You know, once, once you're, you're discharged, so to speak. So we, we fight against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. And it goes on talking about the armor. Now, the Bible speaks of how Jesus left, he led captivity captive, gave gifts unto men. He, he saved people. He gifted them, first of all, by his, with his anointing, his spirit, placed his word in their mouths, and gave them as gifts to the church. 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, it talks about the rapture, how fast it's going to take take place. The, in a moment, in a twinkling of it, the saints, the rapture is coming. Okay? Jesus talked about it. He talked about how, how the uh, two people are going to be working together on, on a mission, walking down the road, what, whatever, whatever they're doing. Two people are going to be in bed together. It's people who share the same bed. One's going to be taking the other left. It's going to happen just like that. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. That quick. They're going to, and what he's actually saying is, yes, he told the church, I will come again. I'm coming again to receive you to myself. I'm coming for you. But he's also telling people who are physically connected to the church that I'm leaving you behind. If you haven't submitted yourself to me, received me as Lord and Savior, I am leaving you behind. No way you can expect Jesus to, to, have, to, to look for him with expectation with the heart and spirit of unbelief. You have to have him. And then, but he's given us so much. He's blessed us. And it talks about in the 56th verse, it says uh, uh, 55th verse, Oh death, where is that sting? Grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is what? The law. The law, that's all the law did was enforce sin. It showed, it showed that, that men were incapable of obeying the law. In, incapable, having been born in sin, incapable of achieving the righteousness of God. We needed something, and God gave it to us in, in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And then it said, but thanks be to God. Listen, thanks be to God, which does what? Gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. If I give you freedom and you tell me, no, nah, master, I don't want to go. <laughs> Come on down. If I give you freedom in my house, no, I don't want to be free. I love being enslaved to this or that sin, whatever it is. And you don't take the, and walk in the freedom and live in the freedom of God. Live God's way. Yes, sir. 2 Timothy 2. Starting with the 22nd verse. Yes, I, I heard a preacher say a long time ago, it's true. Satan doesn't worry about people. He doesn't care about people going to church. He were, he do, but he hates people who believe. And he hates and what he fears most about people who do, who, people who attend a place where the word of God is being taught. Like, who's going to allow hatred? Who's going to allow unbelief? Who's going to not preach against sin? You know, and that place is the door, a lot of them. People that, that, that you know, like I say, just call a spade a spade. Well, I understand how you feel. I know why you hate them. I understand. I go along with it. And, and saints, I, I got to make, make this clear. Don't befriend Sin. Don't befriend hatred. Don't befriend anything that's an abomination to God. Don't accept it. Don't promote it. Don't do it. This, I'll just read this. You, you must stand on the word of God. Satan, he fears. There's a, a word we, we use when people are getting married sometimes. Tell them what they have to be. And what is that? The three C's, of course, most of the time. Love, love unconditionally, with the unconditional love of God. And you have to communicate with each other. Okay? So it makes for a good relationship. But to be committed. Yes, sir. Satan hates a committed believer. Amen. Can't stand it. Amen. He fears that. Somebody who's committed. You know what that means? We sing songs about it. Sold out. Are you really? You know what I mean? So, totally sold out to Jesus. Sold out to his word, the word of God. Sold out to the gospel. He fears that because he knows that person won't be shaken. They won't be moved. Come hell or high water. No matter what happens. And he knows that they're the ones that speaking by the Holy Ghost can do what? They will draw nigh to God, they resist the devil, and they'll put him on the run. He'll flee. Because they'll resist him with the word of God. So, brother, let's, let's, let's read. Let's read this. And then we're going to get one more and we're going home. God willing. Okay? Oh. Second, yes, second Timothy, second chapter, and 22nd verse. Okay. Flee also youthful lust. Okay, now this is coming out of the book of Timothy. So he was writing to his son in the gospel of Timothy. Yes, Timothy was a young man. Yes, so Timothy being a young man, he had the vim and vigor of, of, of youth. And, and Paul was telling him, no, you got you to cut back on some stuff. Yes. You got to change some, the, the way you think about Because if you don't change the way you think about some things, you can't change the way you live. Until you, we take authority over our lives and our minds, you, ne you, you, mm -mm, you never have authority. And that's what the Bible speaks of that in Proverbs somewhere about how a person that has no rule over their own spirit is like a city that's broken down or without walls. Have no protection. You have to. Anyway, flee youthful lust, son Timothy. Go ahead. Righteousness, Thank you, Jesus. Faith. Yes. Charity. Amen. Peace with them that are called with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So is this Bible, and it's full of it. Is this Bible telling us that 
all of us, young and old alike, that we need to live and, and we are expected by God to live in harmony and fellowship one with another. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, yes. yes sir. That's part of it. Yes, sir. Every believer is expected, from, according to this book, expected to be a, a part of a local church, yes, sir. a body of believers, not just some religion. It's expected. Yes, the Bible assumes it. Even when it talks about people being sick, call for the elders of the church. We ain't got so call for the church. What about people who ain't who don't? And every now and then you hear from those who you know. Come on now. Call for the elders of the church for prayer. You know, and that's the way to, uh, uh, to forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. It's, the, the Bible's just full of it. So he's telling Timothy, you, you, you have fellowship. You have fellowship, enjoy, be, be with people that call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. Okay. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Yep, go ahead. Knowing that they do gender strife. Mm -hmm. And the servant of the Lord must not strive. Amen. Read it, brother. But be gentle unto all men. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Apt to teach. Mm -hmm. Patient. Apt to teach. And God knows this. I, throughout this time I've been saved, that's all I've known. Coming from, from a ministry, the word of God from Pastor Hunter, it's, it's no matter, teaching. Yes. That's one thing the, the world church living God is known for. Not just the, the so you can be a member of anything. You can be a member of, of a body of belief, a, a member. Yes, Apt to teach, a certain, but the servant of the Lord has to have the capability given by God, not just something that he's cooking up, but given by God to teach. Be gentle, try to teach people, because the only thing that's really going, when it comes down to it, and you always hear people, you hear it in their voices, their testimony, are either in the times of their sorrow and defeat. They might not say these exact words, but they're paraphrasing in some way or another. They say, I wish I'd done this. I, how I wish I'd obeyed the voice of my teachers. Yes, sir. And that's what the word of God is. God's word is protection. Yes, it's wisdom. It's guidance. It's knowledge. It's, it's help. It's help. It's, 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 about, it's all about the life of God. And it's for our benefit. It's the word. Do you know that? We, well, we already had the message about how how even the, the word is for our healing. Everything. Yes, sir. Talks about it in Proverbs and Psalms and every, everywhere. It's for our healing. Yes, sir. Come on, brother. Let's 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 go here. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. No, wait. Fight them. Raise hell with them. Yes, sir. Argue with them. Try to press. Make. Just push your point. Uh-uh. Instruct those who oppose themselves. So some people are their own enemy. Yes, sir. They think they're doing something smart or, or cute or whatever, and they're destroying themselves, their yes, own sir. lives. Yes, sir. True. And you teach so God willing so that they can be rescued. Yes, some sir. people can't learn. I hate that's the truth. Some people cannot learn. Some people can't see God. They, they, some people can't hear his voice. Nothing. It's all about I, what I think, you know. But what if, and I, it's, it's not about that. What did God say? What, what's, what's his strength? What's, what's his character? What's God telling us here? That we're so full of pride that... We put God aside, his word to the side, but the book says, in meekness, teach them. That's all you can do. Yes, Instruct those who oppose themselves and what, hoping that what will happen. If God, peradventure, will yes. give them repentance to the acknowledging you, of Jesus, the truth. That they'll see it. Yes, sir. That they will acknowledge the truth yes, and they will stop ignoring those faults that they try to keep hidden within themselves. Yes, sir. Be like that old song people sing, not my brother, not my sister, but me. They'll, they'll, they'll see, I need God's help. Yes, sir. I need God's deliverance. I need his mercy. They, can't, they won't, they don't, when, when people are desperate, 
Pride is be out the window. Yes, sir. Let people get desperate enough. Some people don't get delivered because they're not desperate. That's the truth. Amen. Because they won't turn loose pride. They won't relinquish. They, they, won't, they, they won't sit. They won't acknowledge the truth. Yes, sir. And only if they did, could just do that, they could recover themselves by the grace of God yes, out of the snare of the devil. Yes, so sir. believers have been ensnared. Yes, they have. Yes, sir. Come on, let, let's talk about it. Yes, sir. That's the truth. Some believers are in the grips of Satan. I think Jesus, I just, and some people are just silly. I guess I'll just go to heaven anyway. Hope maybe. If you have that attitude, maybe, maybe you're saying something else about yourself. Well, I can't be demonized. Yes, you can be demonized. Yes, sir. We're not going back to it. But, but finish this. But I got, I got to make one little comment on something we've already read. Go ahead. And that they may recover themselves. Listen. Out of the snare of the devil. Go ahead. Who are taken captive, captive by him at his will. At his, so some believers have been ensnared because they've not acknowledged the truth. They, and they won't be recovered until they acknowledge the truth. And since they haven't acknowledged the truth or, or received it, owned up to it, They've not renounced Satan and, and the hidden things of dishonesty. They have been taken captive. But don't be a captive of the boob tube. Watch TV all night and can't pray for five minutes. There's something wrong with that. But it says, hopefully, if they will hear the truth, acknowledge the truth, they can recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. They've got to give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and they can be saved. Man, I know Satan can get me like, of course he can. If, if we didn't go through it, and, and we won't, but if the God has, has taught us already to wear all this armor, why, why is that if Satan has no access to us? He has access to your mind. He can hide out in you. Did you know that? In that soulish part of you, in your mind. We've heard for years about the message about how the shield of faith, the th how he throws darts in a dart of stick. Why? Satan has access. Fiery dart, the stick, where? where? If it's just in your, 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 your skin or your body, you can just pluck that off and go, no. Uh -uh. But it, it, it gets in there. Why? Because you can be touched. By evil, you can be touched by that evil voice. If you're not careful, that's why you have to know God's word. You have to know his character, his spirit. And be able to speak it away. Claim in Jesus' name before you do get captivated. Thanks be to God, saints of God, who gives us victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go to the book of, uh, yeah, Colossians. Let's go to the book of Colossians. Thank you, Jesus. If you've been born again, you've been saved. If you've been rescued today, if you have been delivered today, you live in that. Accept nothing. Shy of that. All the time, we always, I know we all want stuff. That's, that's who we are as human beings. Well, I wish I had this, I wish I had that, no, whatever. Wish I could do this or that, or go this place or that. And you can't, God wants you to enjoy a full, healthy life, a good life, a prosperous life. Believe that. Believe it. And then we want things in our personal space, our personal lives. Uh, and, and, and ladies and, and gentlemen and brothers, don't always expect God to supply what you want. He will not do it. Nope. Like, I want a man to do this or that, that. Come on now, y'all. Don't try to act holy now. I know you. Come. Don't try to look, look like you got your halo on. Or oh, I want a woman who who do this and take care of me like this and help me with this and, and be, and, and be a, a, a strength for me. And, I mean, but you, what, what are you bringing? You know, you have to bring. The thing is, we have to, sometimes we have to forget ourselves. 
and just say, we say it in different ways for different other reasons, but we really, and, and we have to mean it without any thought of what might be appealing to us. Father, I want what you want in my life. I want you to make decisions in my life. And you'll see some changes. You will see some changes in your life, in your relationships and everything. I want what you want. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? Here it is, you know. You got to do it. Let's go here. We're going to read this. Has, well, we'll see. We'll see what Jesus did. And it says here, talks about what Jesus did in abolishing the law and all that stuff. We don't have to live under law. We've been set free from it. Jesus kept all the laws. And he said that I didn't come to destroy the law and the prophets, but to fulfill. And I used to wonder about that. And well, praise God. When he told his disciples, except your righteousness exceed the righteousnesses of these men, the scribes and Pharisees, you won't enter. And those are some men, they were devoutly religious. And the only way to do that is through the Lord Jesus Christ, to have the righteousness of God. That's, that's the only way. So Jesus, he blotted out the law. He blotted out the handwriting in the 14th verse, the handwriting of ordinances, that was against us, that was contrary to us, yes, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, praise God. And I love this, thank you, Jesus. I wasn't gonna read the whole thing, but don't, oh, y'all gonna make me do a dance up here, come on, uh-oh, uh-oh. I gotta do it, because I love this. And it says in the 15th verse, now, we just got through reading about how we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but against principalities, the hierarchies of Satan, various orders of ranks and demonic influence and all that stuff. And he spoiled principalities and powers. Woo! He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. He led captivity captive. And gave gifts unto me. And the Bible says in that same scripture, I believe in Ephesians, he that ascended is the same as he that descended to the lower parts of the earth. But he ascended up far above all heavens that he may fill all things. All things. Just keep that in mind. Acts 1 and 8. Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to close out. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing in them over it. Now, Paul was legally a Roman citizen. He could be, because I think his dad or somebody was Roman or something. Anyway, he bought, his, bought freedom or something. But he, he was a Jew. He was a Jew. And uh, he lived in the days of the old Roman soldier, Roman Empire, and all, all that good stuff. And and and, and he we, and we talked about it before how that the the Roman soldiers, the generals, the captains, or whoever, when they returned from a, a battle in victory, they would act. They already had victory, but they would show their triumph by riding through the streets like on a white, in a white chariot or something with all the, the spoils of, of the people they conquered behind them and leading prisoners behind them through the streets of, of the Roman Empire and bringing some of their, their gold and silver and all that through. They, they're, they're having a, a triumphant celebration. That's triumph. Victory is already won. The believer is to live in triumph each and every day. To celebrate, and as we've already read that, thanks be to God that gives us the victory through and in Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God. Say that he that descended into, into the lower parts of the earth, he, he ascended far up above all heavens that he might feel all things. Now in Acts, it says in the first chapter, eighth verse, 
But ye, this is what he, he was telling his disciples, his, his last words to him while, while he was here physically on earth. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of this sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as they went, as, as, as he went up, two men stood by, by them in white apparel. And they said, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why are you gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. He was, he ascended. He ascended up into heaven. Now that second heaven out there, out in the stars and beyond Earth's atmosphere and all that stuff, that's the demonic seat. Headquarters of demonic principality. And it's Daniel, the, the angel that came to, to answer Daniel, he said, it took me three weeks to get here. I was detained 21 days because Satan detained me as he was passing through the kingdom of darkness, through these various orders of ranks and principalities and evils and Satan and had to fight with the, with, with the demon. He wasn't just talking about the natural king, but the, but the demon who was over Persia, that him. Jesus has obtained victory for us on every end, given us victory on every end, set us free on every end. He triumphed over the enemies. He over the he, he, he spoiled them. Of all principalities and powers, he as, as a, he ascend, ascended up all the way to heaven through their territory. And I can see him now just pardon the way. Praise God. Let the, 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 what can they do with the Lord? Just pardon the way. You can, praise God. You can't see that. Praise God. Say so he spoiled them openly. Triumphed over. Thanks be to God, we have victory. We have victory through Christ Jesus. And no matter what, no matter what, it, but it, the only thing that, that the true victory and, and say overcoming requires, it's truth. God's spoken word, God's word, God's truth, renouncing hidden things of dishonesty, acknowledging things that have not been right or are not right with me. I need to get rid of the turning from my sins. You can't even forgive somebody without repenting. You have to, you have to repent from that evil. You have to, you have to repent. Repentance is a part of everything. Wickedness, everything. In order to be delivered from something, you must turn from it. Relinquish it, renounce it, Turn it loose, and, and if you are a believer, a child of God, a son or a daughter of God, praise God, man. God's got you. He's got your back. You'll never be alone. You'll never be without. You'll never be forgotten. He's got you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's the message for today. Let's give the Lord George Jesus a big hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Walk in it. But I'm Gonna give Jesus a hand. Yes, he is strong and mighty. Excuse me. You've been listening to the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington. If you would like to write Pastor Harrington, send all correspondence to Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. That's Words of Knowledge. P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. Tune in next week for another Words of Knowledge broadcast.